Okay, everyone, assalamu alaikum and welcome to the session. I think everyone is already here. So uh, the purpose of today's talk is to, to prepare for next week presentations. Uh, presentation is on Friday, the 18th, the last day of the semester at three o'clock. Is that right? Uh, can't remember the message. Two? two or three, let me check here. Uh, I think it was originally at two, but we moved it by one hour to accommodate the other people. But I'll check the, let me check here, yeah. Teams, I think it's already scheduled in my other teams. So actually it's also in the same team, but oral presentation, yeah, two o'clock, you are right, thank you. So it is actually scheduled on Friday the 18th, two o'clock, and uh, this is the session has already been scheduled. It will activate on that time. Uh, I already informed and confirmed with uh, IR, uh, um, what's his name, Fairuz. Uh, he and his students will join us as well for the session. Okay, so before we talk about the presentation itself, let's talk about the topic changes. Uh, if you guys remember from last week or the last discussion, we discussed the, the fact that there might be some changes because of the, the pandemic and the fact that you're unable to, uh, to come to the lab. So therefore we're gonna switch the project to um, a simulation based project. So I just wanna see a quick show of hands from everyone here. Uh, I assume that you have all changed to the topic. So the last time I showed you, the resources and how you can learn, you can you can go and learn on uh, Tinkercad or IoT and stuff like that online. So uh, I want some feedback from you guys. Uh, have you made the topic changes? Are you changing your topic, etc.? Did you go online and learn the resources, or you didn't do anything? So uh, anyone, go ahead. Okay, uh, I think I'll start first. So go ahead, Ashraf. My I think don't change the topic because the efficiency solar tracking system for effective integration of solar power into the grid. The changes just minor, I think, because the only thing that change is the methodology, which is some involved site visit, which is cannot be done due to the pandemic. And then okay. just change the the methodology in term instead of go to the site, just doing in the Thinkcat and another thing is we'll do the IoT thing in the Think Speed, which is uh, MATLAB work. Matlab okay, work. so uh, you're gonna use Thinkcat and MATLAB, is that right? Uh, yes, that's all. Okay, so I'm writing it down here. And uh, so just confirm with me if, if I got it right, okay? Hmm. So it's all good? Uh, this is just for, for my own record. So basically no change in topic. The only uh, change will come um, in the methodology itself, right? So uh, you yes, went yes. from actual or you know physical into Tinkercad and MATLAB. Is that right? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Right. Okay. Anything else you want to update me? Mm, not really, sir. Okay. Uh, let's go one by one. Irfan. Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Any updates? I think for my topic. The main topic will not change. However, the final product that I'll be uh, presenting, I think, would solely focus on simulations and uh, true software. Okay, so you're gonna be the the deliverables will be changing. Is that right? Yeah. What will be your deliverables uh, then? Uh, what's your topic again? From, Sorry, Alfan. What's your topic? Uh, the IoT uh, mailbox. Okay, the IoT mailbox, is that right? Yeah, uh, yes. Okay, so uh, how is your output will be simulated? Uh, through, I think SolidWorks uh, for the uh, product design of the actual mailbox and stress testing. And, okay. And uh, to Tinkercad for the electronics. But Tinkercad does not include IoT. Oh. Mm. You may have to, you can still do simulation in IoT, 
but you may have to uh, watch my uh, two videos on IoT simulation, simulated IoT systems. Mm -hmm. You got what I mean? Uh, yeah. Basically, uh, it's two part of video that allows you to learn, but you may have to learn the basics of uh, Python. But mm -hmm. the video walks you through it, yeah? So how to, yeah. then you can learn how to simulate your system. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead of using actual sensors, you can just turn it into uh, some simulated data, and then you can uh, use that. So basically, I suggest you add here also simulated IoT systems. And this one, uh, watch, or you can say use some new videos. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the deliverables will change here. So this one, solid SolidWorks model for mechanics. For mechanics, right? Mechanical design, yes. right? Mechanical design and uh, stress testing. Analysis. Let's just call it analysis, including design and, and, and testing. Kick a card for the electronics and then simulated IT system for, for IoT. Is that right? Mm, that's for right. IoT systems. Uh, Okay, anything else, Irfan? Uh, other than that, I don't think I'll be changing much. Okay, I'm going to go back to you, Ashraf, back here again. Um, um, you have to, actually, this goes for everyone. Uh, just now, Irfan reminded me of it, that you are all mechanical engineering students, so you have to include a little bit of mechanical engineering. Uh, if your if your system is purely programming or purely electronics, uh, the the examiner might complain that this is not much mechanical. So you may have to include a little bit of mechanical design into your system. So what's your plan, Ashraf, to include some mechanical elements here? So for the mechanical images, do exist solar tracker. So the analysis on the component itself by simulation by SolidWorks. Okay, so solar trackers, uh, you're going to use again SolidWorks, right? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Okay, SolidWorks for solar trackers. Okay, sounds like a plan. All right, let's move on. Who's next? Uh, Mohammed, help me. Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, first of all, uh, what's your topic again? Your topic? The <coughs> I'm sorry, guys, I don't remember yeah, your topics because I deal with a lot of yeah. students. It's impossible yeah, to remember yeah, everything. Yeah. Alarm system for the read time. Alarm system for? For read times. What? Read times and current. Read, 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 time. read time and current. No idea what that is. Can you, type, can you write it down <laughs> in the messages, in the chat? <laughs> Just write it here in, in the chat. Oh, okay. Riptide and currents. Oh, you mean the the ocean or the, you know the the water? Is that right? Yes. Uh, maybe uh, at ocean or at river. Or river, right? Okay. What does rip here stands for? Rip. The width width from the. With, uh, oh, is that like the ripple uh, effect? The ripple effect? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So the ripple effect and currents, uh, tides, ripple, or rip tides and currents. That's your original title. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, and at rivers. So what's the plan? Are you gonna stick with this title, or are you gonna you gonna change it, or update it, or or uh, uh, you understand that you cannot, uh, we cannot do something physical. So what's your plan to make it to, to switch it into a simulated system? Maybe uh, so far I think just do the simulation uh, at Cricket for the programming and electronics and maybe do uh, stress analysis for the mechanical parts of the alarm Did you guys? Apart from SolidWorks, did you guys learn anything about um, CFD? Uh, no, yes, sir. Because you, your work or your project includes waves, right? That includes uh, uh, this. This actually, the examiner might say it, not me. 
that although you can use SOLIDWORKS for the mechanical design or whatever, right? But then since your project involves a wave, so he might ask um, you to do this. Because, I mean, uh, it, it does add value to it. Because yeah, same, uh, I'm taking CFD, so uh, so far I, I don't know anything about CFD. But later I will go. So to did you home. did you? Okay, this question will come to all of you tomorrow. I mean, on Friday, and the examiner is going to ask you what have you done in semester one. So since you know that you want to use CFD, did you try to learn CFD on your own uh, in semester one, or at least some basics? Okay to say um, no, it's fine, it's fine. I'm not going to judge you. The examiner will, not me. <laughs> no? No. Okay, so what have you done on uh, learning in semester one? Uh, research, uh, just doing a literature review and try to find a methodology for... Have you for, come up with a methodology for your design, for your system? Uh, just a little bit, sir. That means nothing. Okay, so uh, I hope there is something because um, I am nice to you today, or not not just you, uh, uh, I mean, all of you, but the examiner will be a little bit tough. He'll be like, what have you done? And so I hope from now until next week, the questions will be, or the answers will be more solid. Uh, we'll discuss that in a minute. Um, so so basically, you're gonna, your deliverables will be a simulated system plus some electronics. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you better come up with a plan that the examiners will be satisfied with. Uh, another thing, you see, if you're gonna learn CFD next semester, you have to understand that only by the end of next semester, you will learn CFD. But if you wanna wait until the end of next semester, that will be too late for you. You get know what I mean? Unless, uh, wait a minute, yeah, and uh, that's why you have to at some point if you want to use CFD, uh, you have to do some learning on your own. It's available online, really. It's not that magical. Just watch some YouTube videos and you'll be good to go. And that's why uh, this will come, might come up uh, in the exam, uh, my in, uh, presentation on Friday. Okay, anything else, Halmi? Uh, so far, no, sir. Okay, last person. Uh, who is that? Azrai, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah, go yeah. ahead. Um, my initial topic is automated um, wave maker for fish tanks um, with monitoring camera, but I think I'll drop the monitoring camera. You're still going to stick with the automated wave maker, is that right? Yes. For fish tanks. So that's a mechanical system, like a flap or something that is going to cause a wave, is that right? Yes. So you're going to have to have a mechanical design system, is that right? Yes, I'm and, using uh, SOLIDWORKS. Okay, and you do you have any control or electronics? Um, I also think a cut. Okay. And uh, I'll be including a sensor to to sense any uh, movements in the water. To, okay. To turn what on sensor the you want to use? Um, also using CFD. No, no. I mean, what sensor are you going to use? Oh, I'm not sure yet. I think pressure sensor is fine because the pressure, as the wave comes and goes, the pressure yeah. or the mechanical force will change. So therefore, that that could be your your sensor, or maybe uh, yeah. yeah. I think I think that's a good idea. CFD okay. for what? For the wave? Uh, yeah, the, the wave that the the fish. Have made. you have you learned CFD already? I've looked into it. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm doing the, my. Uh, Yes. For you here, uh, unlike the previous title here, you already have this available, which is good. So therefore, CFD here will be a, a, a bonus, which is a, a welcome bonus. So it's okay. a good idea to add it, okay? So, but only do this after you have already completed these two. Oh, okay. Because in your case, although that your design is interacting with the water, um, I guess uh, here as well, because CFD, uh, yeah, no, I think also here is a CFD is a bonus. 
because you don't really change the, the volume of the water or the flow speed or something like that. You're just watching the waves. So I think also for both of you, uh, uh, Helmi, right? Um, uh, let's go back to Helmi. Huh? Uh, so over here, uh, are you? what exactly are you doing here? Are you monitoring the waves or are you causing the, the tide? Tell me. Uh, I just monitor the wave and uh, I and alarm the people around there about the the. So are you going to monitor around. the wave? What are you going to use to monitor the wave? What exactly is the plan? Are you going to use uh, a sensor, yeah. camera? Yes. Uh, what exactly? Use, sensor, right? Using using a water flow sensor and so, then water yeah. water level sensor to check the water water depth. Okay, water level sensor. Okay, so that's obviously an electronic system. So that would include a sensor here, is that right? So do you have any mechanical system? Um, I mean, um, the design, the device itself, where you're going to put the sensor, obviously um, it's gonna have to be contained inside a device, like a casing, a power source. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir. yes, right. So that uh, device right here must have a, must have dimensions, uh, waterproofing, and so on and so forth. Is that right? Yes, sir. So dimensions, waterproofing. Waterproofing means that it has to be sealed enough to to block the water pressure from coming in, but also you must have networking. Is it going to be wireless or wired? Uh, wire, sir. Wired. So then the wire itself will have some issues. You have uh, the length of the wire. That means you have to do some wire analysis. Um, wire analysis was actually something you sort of learned in statics in um, cables. When you have cables dangling between two towers or something like that, there will be actually static forces. Depends on uh, weight, the the weight per meter or the the, um, the distributed load. Uh, so this is something you can do in your mechanical design. You know what I mean? So all of these is something that could actually be uh, something that you could do, actually. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And the electronic circuit will be for the, basically quite simple, basically. Once you have network and power, then the sensor will measure and then send the signal out. So it's quite a simple F statement. So I guess CFD is not an issue for you here, actually. Uh, again, we can consider it as a bonus. Um, same thing for here. Okay, Azra, uh, help me. Yes, sir. Uh, hopefully, this helps you with the with your analysis. Uh, back to you, Azra. Right. So, in your case, you are actually uh, having a mechanical system that cause a wave. So, obviously, you will have inter interlinking or um, interconnected moving uh, mechanical components. Is that right? Yes. So you will have forces coming from the wave. In this case, again, it is distributed load. Back to statics mm -hmm. again. So you'll have to convert that into singular force or something like that. And then the electronics will include sensors plus actuators as well. Yes. Yeah. And CFD again a bonus. So basically for you two, right? You have to focus on these two parts only. I mean, primarily first the mechanical design, as well as the thinking card for the electronics. Once you finish these two, and you still have time, then you can talk about the CFD. I don't want you to do the CFD before you have completed these two, because uh, this is the primary requirement and this is a bonus requirement. Doing this without doing this is not good because you have not met the, the minimum requirement. Is that clear? Yes, very clear. Okay, so now, uh, any other things, anything else, Israel? Anything else you want to add to your topic? Mm, that's it for now. Okay, so basically, this is now a summary of your uh, topics, all of you, um, Ashraf, Irfan, and Helmi, and Israel. so you can, um, I don't know, take a screenshot or something like that. Maybe I'll, I'll share this file later on with you guys. But this is essentially your topics as of now, yeah? Any questions or any con any clarification or confusion up to this point?
Okay, so now I'm going to move on. To, yes, go ahead, Irfan. Yeah, I don't have any questions in terms okay. of the topics. Okay, in terms of topics, we are all good to go. So let's move on now to the presentation itself. And the presentation itself essentially is going to help us to answer the following questions. I mean, just move this out of the way. Okay, so presentation is um, you. We want to answer the following question uh, about your presentation: What, why, how, when? And the what is you something you already answered in the introduction chapter. So in the introduction chapter, you already have the background. Is that right? So basically, you start your presentation with your background, a few slides about the background of your topic. Um, and so on and so forth. Then here is the problem formulation. You already have it in your chapter one as well. And the problem formulation is, what's the problem that you're trying to tackle here? Uh, so the first few slides is the introduction or the background. Then the next couple of slides is about the problem itself that you are trying to tackle. Um, so for example, here uh, is about the solar tracker and uh, the thing we're trying to do is to make it more efficient. And over here is the, the fact that the mailbox is difficult to monitor from far. So you want a system to allow you to remotely monitor the mailbox for deliveries. And over here is, um, you know, people uh, would like to know that if there is a wave incoming or something like that, and uh, they want to know if there's an incoming wave or something like that. So they will have a, um, an alarm system or a notification system. And finally here, the problem is for the fish tank, if the wave, if the water is stale or it's not moving, cause problems for the fish inside the tank and so on and so forth. You get what I mean? Now, you have to rem remember guys, this is a presentation, it's not a report. So you don't have to go details. You don't have to write, you don't have to fill the whole slide with text because the supervisor, uh, may have seen already your report or basically the slides you have to try to make your slides as visual as possible meaning you put a picture and some description and then you talk the rest of the way you know what i mean you do not want to put a lot of writing there and then expect the the examiner to read it because that's not a good presentation skills the how is essentially is your proposed method, which is essentially again in chapter one. And at this point, you should have it also in your, um, in, your uh, in, in the beginning of chapter three as, as well. Now, uh, also here is, um, yeah, before we go to the how part, you also have to show literature review. Now, this does not mean that you show the whole literature review, or it does not mean that you're going to go and review the whole thing in the slides. No, you're just going to have to mention the summary of it or the findings. See, uh, what does that mean? You have to mention exactly, um, roughly, right, uh, number of reviews, how many papers, reports, journals, total, yeah, you reviewed, and then findings. All of that can be put in one slide. So you can start by saying reviewed, say, 20 papers or 20 reports or 20 reviews in general. Could be reports, papers, everything, right? And then after you have made those reviews, what have you learned? What is the summary of your reviews? So this summary could be the method. This summary could be you have identified uh, something common along all of these reviews. Uh, you have identified, if let's say, among these 20 papers that you have reviewed, you found out that 15 of them talk about the same thing. So obviously that thing or that issue is the most important topic of these reviews. So therefore it becomes the more, uh, the most important, the, the most prominent topic or, you know, in the trend, the most highly trended topic. So this is also have to be part of your why part, which is, so essentially you can see here introduction, formulation, review, and then proposed method. The proposed method, you should start with one slide showing uh, a design diagram or block diagram showing the, the elements of your design. And then uh, this means basically uh, design or block diagram. By the way, this block diagram or diagram or 
outline, outline, yeah. This also has to be in your reports, by the way, in the beginning of chapter three. I think we talked about chapter three already, right? Yes, yes hello? Sir. Yes, right? Uh, methodology. I'm not sure, sir. The methodology, right? We, we, talked about uh, the we talked about what should be in your um, thesis. We talked about the chapters, is that right? Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Did we do that talk or not yet? I think the methodology, we just came over it. What about the chapter one and the review, chapter two? Did we talk about those? Yes, chapter yes, one, what, what should be included? And chapter two, we talked about it, is that right? Yes. Yeah, chapter three, because that would be part of semester two. But for now, what you need to have at the beginning of chapter three is you have to have an outline of your methodology. An outline simply means that you have to have at this point identifying the plan of your of your um, of your of your uh, project. Let me show you an example of that. Um, what is uh, the meaning of blog diagram? Okay, trying to find a, in my other screen, I'm trying to find an example of those. Yeah, hold on, yeah. Just one second, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something that is going to scare you a little bit, but don't be scared. So this is a block diagram uh, from another project. It shows an interactive or interaction of different components. Let me open a simpler one so that you don't freak out. And essentially, uh, it shows you how your various, um, ah, this is a simpler one, okay. So this one right here essentially is a, uh, a different course, but it shows you a block diagram of your project of elements. So the start of the project is here. So you have a question. If there is a yes, then we go into one direction. If there is a no, to go into one direction. If you have various components interacting differently, so there will be, the diagram might be a little bit different. Uh, those guys uh, are really complex, but the, there is a purpose for that because they were evaluated based on a degree of complexity. So they were trying to make it as complex as possible. This is a different team, a different project. So you can see a simple project, just start from the beginning and then they go all the way there. And this is a simple, a different diagram where, where you have different paths. So you have also a same idea or you must develop a similar idea for your projects. So for example, here, you start the project. What are you trying to analyze first? Uh, a solar tracker, okay. How are you gonna make it efficient? Maybe perhaps you're gonna make it better monitored. Maybe you're gonna have to make it uh, reduce power. So that's another block. Then reduce power then, and so on and so forth. Another example here is the, what is it? Yeah, the, the mailbox. You can say that the design made of the mechanical design plus electronics design, and then maybe some networking. And then that would be a result in an IoT system for mailbox. And over here, you have a mechanical design, which is the, the casing waterproofing and networking, and then you have the electronic design, which is the sensor and the, and, the, and the notification. And finally, the same thing here, you can say the mechanical design for the wave maker, and uh, you will have the components, and then you'll have also electronics. Now for you guys, apart from, the, apart from a block diagram or an outline of the method, you should also have, where did that thing go? Yeah, you should also have um, drawings and models. Now, all of you have mechanical design some way or another, right? So that would be the solid works that you guys are working on, is that right? Uh, also, the electrical circuit, okay? Or even program algorithm. I know, I know that you might not have these things ready now, okay, at this point in time, because you're still working on it. That's fine. You could at least for now, uh, Maybe at the very least you have the outline and then you might have some sort of an algorithm ready for your program. The algorithm is just a simple language, simple English language plan for your, for your program. For example, uh, here uh, you have uh, if sensor value equal to something or greater than certain value, activate the warning signal. That's an algorithm right there. Over here you have, um, uh, monitor at all times if 
uh, sensor that indicates an, a new message or a new uh, delivery arrived, activate a notification, something like that. And so on and so forth here. Basically, uh, this one may be not a sensor-based, maybe it's time-based or whatever, how you ever activate this. Uh, then activate the, the, the wave maker and so on and so forth. You get I me? Mean? So you must have a plan for your program, for your circuit design and for SOLIDWORKS. You can probably have time to go to Tinkercad and build a circuit right now, then you can take its picture and put it in your design. I think in some of the examples I showed you, yeah, right here, that's a Tinkercad example. You get what I mean? And that's the flow chart. So you can actually perhaps build something similar and show it in a presentation. You get what I mean? Now we know that at this stage that this is probably not complete and probably the work in progress, WIP. That's fine and understood, but you have to show something. If you go to the presentation on next Friday and you say, I didn't, all I have is just ideas and I didn't do anything yet here. I don't have an outline. I don't have a diagram. I don't have anything yet. Then the examiner will start to worry. Then he will start to ask you questions. What have you been doing all this time? Well, how have you come you haven't done anything yet? But if you show him a block diagram, a circuit diagram, even if it's not complete, if it's partial, it's fine. An algorithm and a, maybe a SOLIDWORKS model, even if it's partial, it's fine. As long as you can show the examiner that you are actually working, you are actually progressing into that. In uh, next semester, semester two, the, the next progress report will be PR3. It will be, we will focus on here, on this part. You know what I mean? And that will be a different conversation. But up to this point, is this part clear? Any questions about it? Clear, sir. No, sir. Okay. The no, next sir. part is, yeah, the next part will be the win, which is here is where you're gonna have to show your gun chart. And this is something that I ask you to develop in the very beginning of the semester, I think. And the Gantt chart that you have to show is the one that starts from the beginning of the semester until now. And sorry, until next until the end of next semester. So start from week one till week 14 of semester two, excuse me. Now, week one of of SAM1. Okay, so the idea behind this is that you're going to have to show us your plan from the beginning of this project until the end of this project and what have you have done. And then, first of all, we're going to see the plan. Okay, and once we see the plan, we're going to see your progress. Okay, you let me open up an, an example gun chart so that I can show you what you're supposed to present in it. So, attachment, no, not this. Hold on, yeah. I'm trying to open up a gun chart from one of my existing projects. One second, yeah. Okay, so this is a gun shot that actually, uh, for a different project, you can ignore it for now. I think this is similar to you, uh, what's his name? The first guy who talked today, uh, Ashraf, right? This is the sort of the parent gun chart. And this is um, how our, our, you see our timeline is about three years. Obviously your timeline is not in years, but in weeks. So you'll have your semester one, semester two, and then week one, week two, week three, until the end of the, the month. Then you'll have to outline your tasks. This is the Gantt chart that I asked you to deliver last time. So instead of, you know what, let me open your Gantt charts easier this way. <laughs> Hold on, yeah. So FYP Gantt chart. Okay, so this is the Gantt charts for a sample Gantt charts, right? And this is one semester Gantt chart. Let me open up. Uh, oh, okay. So, this is the Gantt chart that you submitted. This is, I think, Ashraf's Gantt chart, right? And uh, this is obviously for semester one. You might have to add here semester two. You know what I mean? And notice the difference between planned and actual. 
So we're going to have to see now what happened during this time. Like, for example, this is the Gantt chart that you had before. And during the presentation time next week, we will be in this week already, week 14. So you want to see that if you have met all of these requirements or not. And I remember that I asked you, I think this was the earlier edition of Gantt chart, and you may have to update or something like that. And Yeah, so basically, I remember I told you that this actually is a very common Gantt chart. You may have to develop your accurate Gantt chart and so on and so forth. So I hope you guys developed that already. And then you have to show the, the difference between your actual, uh, sorry, the planned and versus actual. You know what I mean? So we can see what's your plan. Also, we're going to see what's your Gantt chart for semester two. What's your plan next? So the purpose of the Gantt chart is to know what happened in the past, what's happening now, and what's going to happen next. So that's why when we come to uh, here, when, so basically what happened in past weeks, what's happening now, and what's the plan next week. Uh, you know what, let's move all of this here. What happened in past weeks, okay, and what's happening now? Uh, I mean, now as in you know this week or this current weeks, and then what's the plan, and what's the plan for uh, what is that thing? Yeah, for next semester. Well, what's the plan for next sem? Okay, or the other fourteen weeks. They have to have a plan for this. They have to show them the gun chart, the examiner, your gun chart. Maybe you, you don't have to open an Excel file like this, but instead you will save it as an image or something like that, and then you put it in your slides. And you can talk about your, your you know, key points in your project like, or uh, like sort of uh, milestones, like effective or important dates that you have completed something important. <clears throat> like you finish review at this time, you develop your gun chart at this time, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then basically uh, you have the plan, then you can develop this. So basically all of this has to be in your presentation. It's a lot, but actually, believe it or not, all of this has to be included in about 10 slides, 10, maybe 12 slides at the most. Because for the whole presentation, you have about 10 minutes. So maybe this one is maybe two slides, maybe not much. You cannot dwell too much on the theory. This one, the formulation is simply one slide, maybe two at the most at the most and then here is one slide definitely nothing more the purpose of the literature review slide is to verify the two things the the and to the importance or the um, the relevance of your topic and also the relevance of the method this one is where you begin to maybe add more slides because this is now your work you see here this is literature review basically. this is basically a summary of other people's work and this is also a sort of summary of other people's work this is now begins your work so this is where you can add you know five seven slides slides just to highlight your work so maybe one slide for this guy maybe a few slides for those guys and you can also add some slide slides that have some text like bullet points and stuff like that you get what i mean uh, summary of your method or steps or something like that, some text slides as well. Okay, maybe uh, don't uh, don't try to write paragraphs in your slides, just use bullet points. It's much better this way. Is that clear? And finally here is obviously maybe one or two slides, maybe, maybe your Gantt chart is too wide to go into one PowerPoint slide. So maybe one slide for SEM1 Gantt chart and uh, for SEM1 Gantt chart, and then one slide for uh, SEM2 Gantt chart. You got what I mean? Uh, so you can see here is two, three, maybe four, five, and five, 10, and then finally here 11, maybe 12. That's it, that's one slide. And finally, uh, Q&A. Q&A um, uh, &A is not part of the slides. It's, this is basically your last slide. You simply say thank you, and then you stop and you ask your request for questions. Uh, before that, actually, there's an optional section, challenges. Uh, this is actually, if you want to include, sure. If not, you don't have to. This is where you mention 
uh, obviously, as the name implies, any challenges you are facing. And I don't mean personal or, I mean, or administrative challenge, I mean technical challenges, like design problems, uh, programming issues, or technical issues that you are facing. I mean, the reason why you want to do this is because you might seek the help of the examiner. You might give you some feedback that could help. But why this is optional? Because this could backfire because the examiner might not know what you're talking about and therefore um, he might use that against you in some form of way. Like if you are stuck here, how are you gonna finish this project? Something like that. So tread lightly. Another way to use this section is that if you already know the answer to the challenge, and basically it's like a safety net, but you're mentioning it here, uh, like a problem that you already solved, but you don't mention the solution. Just mention the challenge and then discuss possible ideas to show that you have some full command of the topic. I'll leave this uh, part for you, but again, one slide only here. Uh, any questions? So for the challenges, can we yeah. include the limitation of our project? No, no, that's different. You see, a, ah. a limitation is something that is um, you already begin with, and you are already uh, in your scope, you already mentioned it, is that right? So we already agree on that, sort of an agreement. Okay, fine, we're gonna work within this limit. So that's not a challenge. A challenge is something blocking you from completing your work, even with the limitation. Does that answer your question, Irfan? Yes, sir. Okay, any other questions? So are you clear about what you need to put in your slides? Again, about 10 to 12 slides maximum. Uh, the primary work is actually here. The primary part where we're gonna, we want to see really. Let's see, uh, we want to see this part because this is really is your work. The rest, uh, uh, of course, this part as well. Uh, this is second, um, the second most important. Second most important because it shows us progress. So this part right here is obviously important but the reason why it's less important because usually it's given by someone else or it's coming from you know literature review and stuff like that but here is your work actually your own contribution so that's why you should not put a lot of slides here you should not waste a lot of time here and then you should focus the primary element of your presentation here so far so good any questions no sir okay so here then, uh, obviously what's gonna happen, the examiner might ask you a question and the purpose of the question is not to embarrass you. It's just to see that you have full command of the topic. He might ask you a question that he already knows that you know the answer. It's just that he wants you to answer it so that you can show and demonstrate competence. You get what I mean? Like uh, if your topic is about solar, he might ask you a solar related question or he might ask you about your own design. Maybe he spotted some issue and then you will have to explain it. Or he might ask you about the topic related to it, like the foundational topic. Okay, so remember the purpose of the questions is only to, to see that you are competent enough and you know what you're doing. But it's obviously possible that you might get a question that you don't know how to answer, or you don't even know the answer at all. So what do you do then? Any, any uh, suggestions? We'll do more literature review. <laughs> okay, here's, uh, that's actually not bad, but actually I'm gonna say, here's what you shouldn't do. Okay, maybe that's easier. What you shouldn't do if you don't know the answer. Don't BS the answer, okay? I hope everyone knows what BS means. If you try to, bullshit your way around, right? The lecturer, and remember that the examiner asked you a question that he already knows the answer to. And you are talking to, and you are actually talking to a professional, someone who might be an expert on a topic. So if you try to BS your way around, he might even get more offended or you might become defensive. So don't do that. If you know, answer, whatever you know. If you don't know, simply say it, no problem. 
uh, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm not aware of this answer or I cannot answer it right now, but I'm going to take note of your question and I'm going to include it in my report. That's the standard answer for, for any presentation, but we're not here anywhere. If you know the answer, answer it. If you don't know it, um, I don't know. There is no shame in saying, I don't know. Just say, I'm sorry, sir, I, I don't know. Maybe can you explain the questions again? Can you, can you simplify the questions a little bit? Maybe the question is not clear, so you ask you to clarify it. If you still don't understand, just say, I don't know. Or I haven't done this yet, I will include it in my final report. That's not a problem. Actually, that's actually fine with us. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I guess this is it. Any other questions or any other uh, confusions about your presentation? I guess this is it. So if you, I'm gonna actually uh, save this file that I'm writing on right now. I'm gonna share it with you guys in our Telegram group, okay? So uh, if there is no other issues, uh, thank you very much, guys, Sir? I guess. Yes, go ahead. If you have any uh, other questions, go ahead. Will the examiner stop us if we exceed the 10 minutes? No, I will. Okay. <laughs> I'm the chairman of the session. And uh, the chairman, the, the job of the chairman of the session is to monitor time. Uh, oh, okay. I'm going to tell you, go ahead, you have 10 minutes. And I'm going to give you a one minute warning before the one minute. That means when I give you a one minute warning, means you have one minute to finish. And after that one minute finishes, I'm going to say thank you and stop, whether you finished or not. Okay. So you have to practice your session. And the reason for this strictness is because you have to practice. Um, you have to learn how to focus your work and not dwell too much about it. And also because we have a lot of students in this session, we cannot afford to allow everyone to go for, for 20 or 30 minutes. 10 means 10, and you still have another few more minutes for Q&A. So the absolute time you can have is 15 minutes total for everything, including session, uh, including the Q&A. So from the time you come in, uh, introduce yourself, start the presentation, 10 minutes, and Q&A for a couple of more minutes. That's it. No other extension after that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, anything else? Any other questions about uh, anything else? Apart from the presentation, do you have to submit a report or something? Oh, yes. Uh, I think you also have to present the logbook, if I'm not mistaken. The logbook, uh, did we talk about this before? I think it's part of your evaluation. Let me check here. Yeah. I have found uh, not here actually. Um, which semester are we in? Oh, we are actually here. Oh, we are here, right? You guys are project one, is that right? Yes, project one. Oh, okay, so let's open up. Okay, so oh, this is me as an examiner. Okay. Uh, okay, so no wait, I, I skipped it. Okay. okay, so this is Helmi, all right. So, ah, oh, it's a good idea you guys are watching this. I haven't entered all of those styles, numbers yet. Okay, so oral presentation and logbook. Yes, you have to actually include your logbook as well during the presentation. Uh, you, you have to submit it to me. The logbook essentially is, a, as the name implies, is a logbook. By the way, uh, uh, this is only my side as an examiner, as a supervisor. The examiner also uh, scores these things as well. If you noticed, this is me as a, as a supervisor, but this is me as examiner. 
And actually, I also monitor uh, the presentation as well. So essentially, um, the examiner will also include uh, in your presentation, but you also have to present the logbook. What's in the logbook? You know what? Let's go back there and get the logbook definition. Here we go. I'm going to just copy paste it. Did the, the project or the FYP coordinator mention about the logbook? Or tell you anything about yes, the logbook yes, before? Yes, sir. We have this. We have finalized, right? Uh, you, uh, you just. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I mean is that you have to submit it. You have to uh, submit it also presented by the end of this semester. There's another logbook by the end of next semester, but then you'll have to essentially, you don't have to write details, but you have to include uh, key elements like maybe once every week, uh, what you have done, or once every two weeks. Basically, you look at your Gantt chart and you summarize it into uh, systematic page by page activities. You know what I mean? And uh, this logbook eventually uh, will have to be signed by me. Page by page, you have to be signed by me. But I don't have to sign it during the presentation. This can be done in a separate time. So after you do your presentation, you will have to send to me the logbooks. You can send me the soft copies, no problem. You know what I mean? So you can go to a Word file, create your logbook. Maybe uh, you can make a, a summary of your activities every two or three weeks, the key elements of those activities, and then send that file to me. And that will be the logbook. And then, uh, then for semester two, you can update that to add the work for semester two as well. Is that clear? And based on that, yes, I will yes, be yes. able to evaluate your logbooks as well. Any questions? So don't forget, you need to prepare slides for the presentation, but you also need to work on your logbook, and which is a Word file that basically the content of it is coming directly from from this part right here, which is from here. So you can say here, useful for log book. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions? So, Go uh, ahead. Do we have to uh, submit the slides to you? Uh, no need. This okay. is just presented live for the presentation, uh, for, the, for the examiner's uh, benefit, not for me. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, well, if this is the case, well, it's already almost, I mean, exactly one hour. So I guess this is it for us for today. And uh, that concludes our session for uh, briefing on the project today. Thank you very much, guys. If you missed anything, you can always come back and see this session because it's recorded and I'm going to post it on our team page as well. So it's going to be available somewhere here as well, similar to this link right here. Is that clear? Yeah, sir. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, guys, and have a good day. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.